Hey guys, Adam here. Today we're going to talk about SolidWorks inspection and all the different ways that you can utilize this tool in your quality inspection process. So there's pretty much four or five like steps that you can work through between the add-in and the standalone. So there's two different versions, SolidWorks uh, inspection add-in and standalone, and they both come with the license. So you get both versions when you decide to purchase SolidWorks inspection. Now, the add-in, of course, requires you to have a seat of SOLIDWORKS, whereas the standalone installs by itself and does not require a seat of SOLIDWORKS. So we stepped through four different processes. Uh, first off, starting with a 3D part file and using that for our inspection documentation using our DIM expert slash MBD dimensions, annotations rather. And then we jump into a SOLIDWORKS drawing file and take a look at how we can balloon that and create our AS9102 Excel document for inspection. And then we jump into the standalone tool and take a look at how we can use PDFs, e-drawings, AutoCAD files, and then uh, lastly with the uh, step AP242 or CAD files from other, uh, you know, other CAD tools in the industry. We can also run inspection on those as well. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's jump into SOLIDWORKS inspection. And hopefully, hopefully we cover all four of those. And and see how maybe one or two or maybe all of them fit in your guys' scenario. So this first one here has, um, has a part file that has been annotated by DIM expert. Uh, what this means is the feature dimensions aren't always being shown, but the DIM expert dimensions are essentially the ones that are important. And those are the ones that are kind of showing up in this blue color. So these are independent of your uh, feature dimensions, but they're added essentially exactly the same. The cool thing about this is if this technique is you, you only uh, annotate or dimension or tolerance um, the, the critical uh, features in the model. So not everything's being shown. So what's kind of cool about this is we can turn on our add-in. So it's a SOLIDWORKS add-in. This lives inside of SOLIDWORKS. So for this tool, you would have to have a seat of SOLIDWORKS in conjunction with the inspection add-in to utilize this function. So we can go to our inspection tab and then check on our inspection report. There's all kinds of different reports. I've made a custom one here too. You can make your own. Um, for this one, we're just gonna use the default one and kind of trek through. So this is what inspection add-in looks like, right? It's built right into SOLIDWORKS. It's this left-hand menu um, kind of uh, wizard that, that guides you through the process of creating an inspection report. And what's really great is that this remembers all of the like metadata from SOLIDWORKS. So I can select part name and then go find, oh, there's my description. And I can link my part name to my description. And then for part number, I can find the part number for this widget and then the part revision and so on. And you can even add your own custom um, information here too. So if I wanted to, I could go like, hey, let's go ahead and add, um, let's go ahead and add material. and then link that to, I can either type in a value if this doesn't have a material property assigned to it. I could link it to the um, SOLIDWORKS material. I could just type something in. So I could type in like, you know, 6061 T6. Cool. So you can add your own custom properties if you like. And then it kind of gets down to the, the method by which we're gonna create this inspection document, how we're gonna um, balloon it, in what direction, and then the general classification of, uh, of inspection balloons. So generally we're just gonna say everything's incidental because usually you know, there's less critical dimensions on an inspection report. So you just say everything's incidental and then we'll come back and make a, you know, the few things critical. Then you can also um, select your AQL um, sampling, lead 0.025, and then kind of go to the next tab. So here's where we can choose what to include or what to exclude when we're creating this. Um, I find that most customers just leave this default. There's, uh, you know, like reference dimensions might be something you want to check on if you have like an overall length that isn't necessarily a tolerance, but you want to keep track of it. But generally speaking, not much work to do here. Uh, so we'll go to the next category. This is your catch-all. So if a dimension has doesn't have a tolerance, but has significant figures, then it will default to this table. 
for the general tolerance, right? So if we're looking at like this um, 124.50, it's got two decimal places. Here's its default plus and minus. You can go change these as needed. So it goes up to four by default. You can go up to more if you need to. And then of course your units. So once once this is all done and, and settled, and generally speaking, this is something that is already established before you uh, you know disperse the inspection um, serial numbers out. Right? This is just like general company information. Uh, you know you can you can pretty much leave this default too. These are usually like standard specs, but um, I guess depending on what customer you're using, you might need to change that. Okay. So now we're actually live. We're in the inspection um, document here. And uh, you can see it's ballooned all of the um, various annotations that we've created. And it's all done in a, uh, in a 3D model, right? This is um, leveraging some of like the new technology that's coming out like MBD and, you know, um, model-based definition, um, you know, and, and using the part file as its original source is really handy if if you're the ones in charge of your files so a little bit difficult to have customers do this for you but if you guys are making fixtures or jigs or something and you know this is this is how you might make it then this might be the process and then exporting this to excel is a cinch so we'll go ahead and grab oh, is this the template i want i think so i think i need to add this one yep there we go and then we'll generate our inspection report, go ahead and save this out, open it up. And this is a way we can balloon a part with the annotations rather than ballooning a drawing. So this is one of the avenues of um, inspection. Showed up on my other screen here, I'll just bring it on over. To generate your um, AS9102 um, uh, inspection report. What's really cool about this too, there's some auto formatting that's going on here. So like, you know, you can format all kinds of widgets in Excel, but if I type in 10 here, it'll show up green because it falls within the limit. And this is really great for when you accidentally fat finger a digit. So if you're, you know, typing in, you know, 10 or 10 and you accidentally, you know, press the one twice and it's 110, then it'll show up red. So if I accidentally make, you know, a decimal error, right? then it will show up red and it's like, oh, wait, was that right? Oh no, I, I fat fingered it and so I can go back and fix it. So really nice formatting that's kind of built in. Um, this is how you might, uh, you know, create an inspection report based off of a part. So now let's go to the next step here. Let's take a look at a drawing file. So here I have this flange. This is your typical, um, you know, SolidWorks drawing. And, you know, the parts in the drawing and has all the dimensions on here. Uh, and so from this standpoint, whether it has one sheet or two sheets or 10 sheets, it doesn't matter, right? We can take um, a very similar approach and balloon the drawing. Now this might, this is like a more typical um, uh, workflow. This is, this is usually what, um, you know, a lot of customers are dealing with on the inspection side, uh, you know, either this or a PDF version of this, right? Those are like the two most popular. So the way this works is really similar, right? The only thing is we have, um, we have some additional metadata that we can capture. And that's because we have metadata from now the part file and metadata from the uh, drawing file. So if I go to the part name now, I can capture not only the drawing uh, metadata, but then also the part metadata. So we can go, we can track through this again, we can find the part number and then link it. Oops, that was the part name. Well, you get the idea. Um, flange, like that, revision. Uh, that's, you know, something that's in the drawing, so I can capture that. I can go to the document name and find, you know, something else, you know, and keep this list going. What's also kind of nice too, is you can uh, keep a list of your current vendors. This is just a text file that's found in the SOLIDWORKS database. And so you can add your own vendors to each one of these so that, that you know, you can, you know, pre-populate this list and, you know, select the right, uh, I think this is the one I put in McMaster. <laughs> and then select the right vendor, type in the job number and so on. Again, adding custom properties is kind of cool here too. We can go, um, say we want to do manufacturing process and I can grab that data 
from, let's see, it's not found here, but it's found in the part. So I can go to the part and say, oh, that's machined. And then click OK. Then I can add another one, and it might not be in this list, right? Certainly, this is a text file too, and you can add to this list permanently by modifying the text file. But maybe I want finish. I heard you say finish when you were describing some of the intricacies of your guys' process and finish or coding or something. You can go ahead and add that. I can grab that from my custom properties and bring in my black oxide finish, right? And that'll show up in my report. So that's kind of cool. Again, kind of the same process for selecting your sampling. Um, this is just, you know, customer dependent, vendor dependent, or internal dependent, whatever you guys decide. Um, you know, I guess the most common AQL is 0.025, but uh, you could select any one of those. Um, trek me to the next category. Um, again, you know, if you want to include or exclude any other things, you can check these on or off. And then your default tolerances are exactly the same. Uh, if I wanted to make a change to this, like let's say uh, we'll do 25 here and 25 here. When we generate the inspection report, we're going to look for this change and, uh, and see how this is going to impact us. Okay, so now we're, we've gone through the inspection wizard, ready to generate the inspection report. Here I have the option to balloon one by one or create all the, all the balloons, you know, essentially at once. Now what it's done here is it's found all of the dimensions and the notes and listed them, you know, in this uh, inspection report. And what I'm looking for is the balloon generation. So I can click that box on. You can see that SolidWorks inspection is, is working up here, generating all the balloons and all the callouts, showing it on the drawing. These are all editable too. So if you need to move these around later, you can just click and drag them. Or sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll get in the way of another dimension or do you just want to move it for clarity? Say like this 36, you can grab that balloon and just kind of move it wherever you like. Speaking of like 36, what's kind of cool too, a lot of the time, um, I mean, talk, just talking with like people who do first article inspection, like one of the pains is like, well, where the hell is balloon one, you know, or balloon five or balloon whatever. And so they're scanning this drawing and it's got like 50 different views on it. And you're just getting frustrated because you're like, Ugh, I just need to find this. So a really cool technique here that, that you can do is you can find like, you know, a balloon you're looking for, let's say like 10. Uh, and you can right click this and say zoom to selection. And so it'll zoom to balloon 10. That way you can find it instantly on your drawing views which is kind of just nice, especially if you're a user, it's something you can appreciate. While we're here on 10, I don't know if we can make this critical, but I guess we are because I selected 10. <laughs> uh, there's two ways of doing that too. Uh, you know, you can change the classification of a dimension, something from this menu, or, and, and just by right clicking, or you can go down to the, uh, the list here and then change its classification critical. The other thing that's really handy too, is you can also specify by what instrument they're supposed to use to measure this dimension. And by default, there's a pretty good list here in, in SolidWorks, but you can, you can go through and add to this list or delete from this list as you like. Um, let's see, what would make sense? Yeah, like, what, do you, what was that? Um, is there a comparator in this thing? It doesn't look like it's alphabetical, but we could add comparator to this list. Um, so it's, it's just a text file and we can add it. Let's do an angle gauge or something. And then now when the, when the inspector gets the, the, you know, gets to balloon 10, it's going to tell him, oh, you have to use a caliper. You have to use a micrometer. You have to use, you know, a comparator, so on. And so each one of these balloons is edited, um, just like that, right? So you can click on each one and uh, and add specificity. Another cool thing too is, you know, if you're in a SolidWorks drawing and you you know you bring up this little menu, you can mark something, uh, you know, for inspection by using the little parentheses. So when so you know if you are doing a drawing, you can add these little parentheses in that tell people, hey, you should balloon this thing, but you might not balloon other things. So just kind of um, kind of an option. I think you can do. Uh, you can do another one too. Oh, this guy right here, inspection dimension. There we go. You can put uh, that for like something critical if you like. 
So those little subtle changes on the drawing side kind of help on the inspection side if, if there's more than one person having their hands in each one of those categories. And then so from here, once you've got everything ballooned, again, what you're going to want to do is generate that, in, you know, that Excel inspection report, that uh, 9102 report, and that looks like this. And so um, the formatting still applies. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, this is Form 3. There's um, Form 1 automatically generated, Form 2 automatically generated, and then Form 3. And another thing about, about these templates, this is like the, the generic 9102 template, but you can customize these templates. A lot of people just like to put their logos and their company name in there so that every time they bring up or they export to Excel, they don't have to type all that in you know, you know, every time. It gets a little tedious. And that's what we're trying to avoid, right? That tedious um, operation, right? Typing in numbers and whatnot. So um, yeah, these are fully editable, fully customizable, and there's an editor that you can use to, uh, to modify these. There's also um, like the, uh, the integrated, um, you know, dollar sign uh, links that you can use to, to help um, automatically generate some of these, some of these uh, cells, right? Kind of like the dollar sign material from SolidWorks, like those, those shortcuts, you guys know what I'm talking about? No. Nice. Okay, so that's kind of like the second avenue of the SolidWorks inspection tool. Um, specifically, both options you have um, for the add-in, right? So the add-in works with the drawings and the add-in works with parts, right? And not just SOLIDWORKS parts, but any parts that have PMI data on it. So anything that has, um, you know, or like, or like a step AP242 or anything with MBD, a lot of the stuff from, you know, like CATIA and NX and, you know, those um, kind of CAD tools we can open natively in SOLIDWORKS and we can choose to include the PMI data uh, which has, you know, your critical dimensions and dimensions for inspection. And so we, we kind of, we fit that bucket really well with the add-in and we can, we can open up a, a plethora of files and, and get a lot of really good information out of it. So trekking on to the next tool, that's going to be the uh, standalone inspection document. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the standalone inspection doc or a standalone inspection tool doesn't require a seat of SOLIDWORKS to run. So it's just its own thing. It can install by itself and SOLIDWORKS is not required. Now with every seat of inspection, you get both, right? You get the add-in and you get the inspection or the, the add-in and the inspection um, uh, standalone, right? So uh, they're, they're one and the same, but they offer two different sources of functionality, right? So where the inspection uh, standalone tool excels and thrives is with the with PDF drawings and with um, uh, PMI files essentially so file generic files that also contain um, PMI information okay cool so let's just give this a shot so we're gonna open up a project here start with a new project actually metric and we're going to grab this guy. So this is a pretty generic um, drawing. Uh, oops, I have a cast on, so I've been doing everything left-handed, not normally left-handed, so I have to cheat sometimes. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, we have our, our PDF and all of our views. And so we can start by using the OCR, it's called optical character recognition. That allows us to box a dimension or box a note or box a series of notes and then generate a balloon off of that. So in all, in all fairness, I was practicing my left-handed box technique. <laughs> it's a little rough. So we'll see how good I do. So I'm gonna control zoom in here so I can get to the the 150, we can start with that guy. So I'm gonna box this and note that I've selected a dimension. And you can see my first balloon gets pulled in and you can see the type is dimension. I can change it here after the fact if I need to. 
it read the text and then input the numerical value at 150. So super nice there. And then you can change its, its um, inspection classification if you like to incidental or critical or major or minor, whatever you need. And then it's default plus and minus that 0.3. That was because our catch all for um, this document with, with uh, essentially no decimal places is a plus and minus 300 or this is a millimeter, so 0.3 millimeters. And then you kind of just continue trekking down the, the um, views, you know, and grab the components um, that you need to grab for your inspection process. So you can grab the 90, 65, and it does things like it recognizes the diameter symbol. So you can see the diameter symbol come in there. It's a little small, let me go ahead and zoom in real quick. Oh, that wasn't much of a zoom. Try that again. There we go. The diameter symbol got captured in from that view. And we can continue to go around the model and, and then just select more things. And then like that six got in the way of that other dimension, so I can just drag and move it over. And grab this guy. So now this might, this is a note, right? So then I might grab like my notes and say, hey, I'm grabbing something different than I normally would, right? It's not a dimension. So we can grab this guy and it's essentially gonna take a picture of this and then read it as a text value in the field. Now let's say you goof. Um, so like I'll try to, I'll goof on purpose. So let's do, uh, let's see, let's go back to our dimension and let's grab, what can I goof on here? Okay, it'll be a really bad one. It's like, oh, I wanted that, right? And I grabbed the 160 and I grabbed a whole bunch of other stuff with it and it's reading all this extra information. Um, what you can do is recapture. So I can just say, nope, just, you know, in this little box, you know, just capture what's in that, in that, right? And then it would uh, you know, recapture the, the 65 diameter. I must have missed it really bad. But you get the idea, right? So you don't have to zoom in all the time, right? You could just get really close and then get it perfect right over here. So once we're done with this and we've ballooned enough, then we can go um, export this to a 9102 document. Um, another thing too is we have this little uh, menu here at the bottom that kind of shows us what we've captured and what we've gone along and created, which is kind of nice. So I can go ahead and export this to Excel. I can grab one of my templates. I think I have a custom template here. Let me see. Um, I will just use this one. So the common theme here is generating that 9102 Excel document, right? <laughs> so that we can input some of this data. Uh, this is one I've been messing with. I just formatted that wrong. Let's see, change that back. But, uh, you know, form one, two, and three again. The only thing that's missing out of this one is they, they don't have the automated, form, automated formatting for like the plus and minus. So here we have like 65.3 and 65.4 or 64.7. So if I do like a 64, um, you know, it's not gonna show up with the red and green, but you can format that in after the fact. It's just an Excel thing. But again, 9102 document generated. Um, you can use your CMM data to auto-populate this information. Um, same thing in the add-in, same thing in the standalone. You can use CMM data. Um, does require a little bit of work to get the post to line up just right, but, but once it's done, it's done. Um, that's something that we can help you out with, certainly. But that's how you might use um, the inspection standalone with a very generic drawing. So let's try something a little tougher. So I'm gonna open up another project here. Here we go. Okay, so sometimes you get PDFs with some weird font, right? Does this happen to you guys at all? Is that something? Yeah, it's, it's not, the probability isn't zero, right? <laughs> So, so it happens, and that's why we have a bonus tool 
to help you capture some of these weird fonts. This could also be a PDF that maybe isn't the highest resolution. And you can kind of train the OCR, the optical character recognition, to read either different fonts. Uh, now, if you know the font, you can just select the font, and that's like, you know, 100% easy peasy. Uh, if you don't know the font, you can train it to read the font. So, or if it's just some um, custom font, you can train it to read the custom font. So, this is just kind of cool because, uh, you know, there's only so many characters and so many numbers, right? There's just one through nine, and I guess 26 for, for notes, the alphabet, right? So, uh, and then symbols here and there. But the cool thing is, like, you know, as you go, you could, if it's a common vendor or common customer, and they won't release their font to you for whatever reason, or maybe it's just legacy data and there's no one to release a font, you can train OCR to do this for you. So it's kind of fun. So we have this OCR editor. Uh, this launches an, another application. Oh, I you know what I should do? I should show you, before I do this, I'll show you what a mistake looks like. How about that? Um... I'm gonna go ahead and capture a, this three, only because I know it, I think it does it wrong. Yep, it captures it at a five. And then I can do one more, like this one. It reads a one as a hyphen, right? Not a big deal, because we can train this like really easy. So I'm gonna undo this actually. Oops, okay, I just deleted it, that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and go to the OCR editor. And for these really particular scenarios and situations, you can train the um, OCR to read your document. So I need to open something up first. Add a drawing, there we go. Cool. All right, so we saw that three read something funny there, which, you know, is fine. Um, control Z. There we go. Now I can auto extract. This is a way you can like uh, just grab a series of a series of of um, characters and read them as one. So this is really good for capturing like notes. So if the note doesn't come in right with the right characters, you can just box select the entire note, and every character in the note is then its own property. So you can see how it's automatically highlighted each one of those individually, and I can go through and see how it reads each one. So here's X. Well, that looks good. And I can go to the period. All right, that looks good. And then O. Sometimes this might read as, a, as an O as opposed to a zero. So you can type in like O or zero here, whatever you think you need, depending on what you're capturing. Nine's good, eight's good, seven's good, six is good, five, good, four, good, three. You can see how that might be a sloppy five, the way that kind of looks. And it reads it as a five. So from now on, we're going to say, hey, read that three as a three. And then go to two and one, and they're all good. And you can do this, and you can repeat this for, like, symbols. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. So, uh, you know, you have a symbol, and you go capture it. And it's like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so you can go to the symbol library and say, well, that's going to be my diameter symbol. So you can go to your mathematical symbols and grab your diameter. And from now on, that character font is going to then associate to this guy here. Okay, we can try one more. We can grab this character. Oh, my left mouse is only so good. But in the plus and minus, we can say, well, that's not a question mark. Let's go back to our mathematical operations and grab my plus and minus associated with that. And then again, from now on, you're good. And then so at the end of this, what you need to do is you need to save this as a font. So you save this as a trainable dictionary data. You could save this as like, you know, Acme Company, old, you know, or legacy data, you know. And so, so um, this would be built in now to the OCR to read um, that font or those characters or symbols or whatnot. Um, really important because there's always that one problematic file and you, you just want your life to be easier. This is how you do it, right? So pretty robust um, OCR capture tool here. Um, definitely a highlight for a lot of my customers who don't know this exists. They're like, Adam, I'm having a heck of a time. You know, like, <laughs> like I got it for you. Let's do this. Let's jump on a web meeting. I'll show you the 101 on this. And they can save the fonts and then all their problems are solved.
I like being that guy. I like being the problem solver guy and making people's lives easier, you know? It makes me feel good. It makes them feel good. You can't complain. You know what I mean? So that's the OCR editor. And the last kind of bucket we can go down, um, the last road we can go down is uh, with generic 3D files. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. Also, I actually have one more thing to show after that. Okay, now this file comes from, what's part nine? Anyone know what that is? Dot PRT, I think that's NX, right? Or Pro Engineer. Yeah. Right, and then you, you keep on putting more, uh, more revisions on the end of it. Um, and what's really cool is we even know, um, we even know how to control the revision from third-party data, right? So this is a generic uh, solid file. And underneath it, there are a series of um, tolerances that are applied to it. I don't know why my background's blue, by the way. That's a new thing. <laughs> I can change that in options. But uh, so it might be a little hard to see right now. I apologize for that. Um, but you can see all these little um, these little notes with their tolerances, and we can we can choose to balloon this sort of information too. So, yep. Yeah, so, just know that it's I guess an option in the future. We can go ahead and and you know balloon all all of these things, and you can select them. Oops, I probably should select a dimension, seeing how I'm telling it to select a dimension. But uh, you know we can extract those. Um, another thing that's kind of cool too is we have. One more option here. Let me let me pull up one more document. Oh, eDrawings also works too. I didn't I didn't show you guys that, but it works almost exactly the same. You can open up the eDrawings file with the annotations or dimensions or feature dimensions in there, and you can balloon that as well. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. So you could load up your AutoCAD prints into eDrawings, and then balloon your AutoCAD documents right here cool so see i don't i'm not sure what metadata came with this but probably not oh no 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 metadata available okay cool so um yeah we can we can kind of trek through this we, we can type in if it's not if there's no metadata available you can just go ahead and type it in you can look at it the part number on this is 104595 oh well, that's a part number uh let's see plate kind of trek through the wizard like you normally would. And then you can grab your dimensions. Um, you can change your classification. Um, type in any comments. Let them know about your AQL sample size. Um, there we go. Grab that guy. Grab this guy. And then you can see that as I'm clicking these, they're showing up in my list down here. So I can come back and double check them. I can make any edits and anything here too. And then the process of generating your 9102 documents, pretty much the same. And there you have it. Let's see if this one has that formatting in there. It doesn't, but you can add it. Six is outside the window. All right, so the last thing that I kind of wanted to show you too is um, Extraction Expert. So this is also for those PDFs that might have um, some interesting characters in it, or the characters are like, you know, hard to, hard to, um, hard for the OCR to capture. I think I'm just gonna open up um, that previous, we'll go here. There we go. 
we kind of started off with this guy. I guess we'll end up with it too. So let's grab our dimension and then grab something here. So there's an extraction expert button when something doesn't go the way it should. Um, but this, this little widget right here helps it, like it reviews the, the document for errors and then tries to reassociate them. If I grab a couple more, I think I can get it to show up. Um, let's see if I grab that one wrong. Nonetheless, it's, it's a, it's essentially a fix it tool and I can't break it right now, <laughs> but, uh, it, it's a nice little function that they've also built in to inspection and the instruction expert. Let's see if I go, there we go. So I've, so th this one I've had to edit cause maybe it came with a, if you know, if it comes in weird like that then you can click on, um, I, in this case, I physically broke the OCR by typing in a plus in between the 120. But, um, so when you do have to go make changes, if there's a lot of changes you have to make, for instance, like if it always brought in a minus sign or something because of a leader, like if you accidentally captured the 90 with like the, if you captured it like that, you know, where you got the, the minus in front of it, and it's actually just the leader, but it's not, then you can hit extraction expert. And, um, and then it, what it would do is essentially help you along that that path to fixing multiple errors in your OCR capture. This is just, it's, it might take a minute because I've done this once this morning already. It might be reading double. <laughs> so those generally, um, those techniques, um, those files and formats and how we, how we can use them between the add-in and the standalone document are are the uh you know opportunities for inspection you know to fill the gap to fill the void in your guys's current processes all right guys thanks for joining me on this solidworks inspection tour hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something new we covered those four categories four or five categories we have the uh the solidworks 3d part file the solidworks drawing the pdf in the standalone version the uh, e-drawings and then also a general 3D file. So SolidWorks Inspection is certainly an awesome tool that can have, help you automate your AS9102 inspection documentation, it prevents you from fat fingering digits on accident. There's a lot of automation, balloon automation, and uh, you know, just a lot of ways that you could uh, reduce the errors in your processes and then speed up those processes as well. So if you'd like more information about SolidWorks Inspection, go ahead and visit GoEngineer.com and look for our inspection page there to learn more and request a trial. This is Adam Hughes with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.